We'll start with the upper limb. The nerves to the arm originate in the brachial plexus. This illustration shows the brachial plexus from the anatomic perspective. From here on, we'll go over the brachial plexus using this schematic diagram instead. In the neck, the brachial plexus forms from the roots at spinal levels C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. The C5 and C6 roots join to form the superior trunk. C7 continues as the middle trunk, and the C8 and T1 roots join to form the inferior trunk. Moving downwards towards the clavicle, each trunk separates into an anterior division and a posterior division. These divisions form the lateral cord, the posterior cord, and the medial cord. The cords are named based on their location relative to the axillary artery. The anterior divisions of the superior trunk and middle trunk form the lateral cord. The three posterior divisions come together to form the posterior cord. The anterior division of the inferior trunk continues as the medial cord. The cords then divide into terminal branches or nerves. It sounds complicated, but to make it easier, just remember one, two, three. Here's how it works. Instead of remembering trunks, divisions, and cords, we can just think of the brachial plexus as composed of a top part, a middle part, and a bottom part. Then remember one, two, three. One individual part has two end nerves and three side nerves. One, two, and three. So, one top part of the plexus, two end nerves, the musculocutaneous nerve and the median nerve, three side nerves, the long thoracic nerve, the dorsal scapular nerve, the suprascapular nerve. Moving to the middle part of the plexus, one middle part, two end nerves, the axillary nerve and the radial nerve, three side nerves the upper subscapular nerve, the thoracodorsal nerve, and the lower subscapular nerve. And for the bottom part of the plexus, one bottom part, two end nerves, the median nerve and the ulnar nerve, three side nerves, the medial pectoral nerve, the medial brachial cutaneous nerve, and the medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve. Notice that the median nerve is an end nerve for both the top part of the plexus and the bottom part of the plexus. Now, let's go through the movements and sensations we would test for each part of the plexus in order, top, middle, and bottom, taking it from the top. Remember, the one top part has two end nerves and three side nerves. The two end nerves. The musculocutaneous nerve lets you flex your arm at the elbow. It also provides sensation to the lateral forearm, from the elbow to the wrist. We'll talk about the median nerve later. Now the three side nerves. The long thoracic nerve controls the muscles that support the scapula so that you can push your hand and arm forwards. The dorsal scapular nerve allows you to push your hand and arm backwards. The suprascapular nerve controls the muscles that abduct your arm the first 30 degrees and rotate it laterally. Next is the middle part of the plexus. Just like before, one middle part has two end nerves and three side nerves. The radial nerve enables you to extend your arm at the elbow and extend your hand at the wrist, like a police officer stopping traffic. It also provides sensation for the dorsal surface of the arm and the lateral hand. The axillary nerve allows you to abduct your arm more than 30 degrees. It also provides sensation at the shoulder. The three side nerves are the upper subscapular nerve, the lower subscapular nerve, and the thoracodorsal nerve. They control muscles that work together to adduct the arm and rotate it medially. Now the bottom part of the brachial plexus. Of course, the one bottom part has two end nerves and three side nerves. The median nerve originates from the top and the bottom parts of the plexus. It controls the muscles that enable you to pronate your arm and to flex your index and middle fingers. 
It also provides sensation to the lateral palm and the lateral three and a half fingers. The ulnar nerve enables you to abduct and adduct your fingers. The ulnar nerve also provides sensation for the rest of the palmar surface of the hand, that is, the medial palm, the medial side of the ring finger, and the little finger. Now, let's look at the three side nerves. The medial pectoral nerve controls adduction of the arm and medial rotation. The rest of the side nerves are sensory. The medial brachial cutaneous nerve provides sensation to the medial part of the upper arm. The medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve provides sensation to the medial part of the forearm. Can you tell which nerve's action is demonstrated by the Supremes when they perform their classic hit, Stop in the Name of Love?